The last piece of the application is being able to copy the changes we made to the box. If we look at the box computed property, the value we're returning in the function is what we want to return to the user. We're not going to add an object to the clipboard. We'll pass in the string version of this property. The browser has a simple function we can run for copying the data to the clipboard. Let's look at how we would do that. Let's switch over to the index file. Search for the second button in the template. We'll use this button to listen for a click. On it, add the click event listener with the prevent modifier. The name of the function we'll run will be called copy. Next, let's define the method in the instance. In the app.js file, we'll define the copy method to the methods object. Inside this function, we'll call the documents.execute command method. The execute command method allows us to perform user actions on the browser. We can do things like cutting, pasting, and copying content from the browser. It has one argument, which is the action we'd like to perform. We'll perform the copy action. The action must be passed in as a string. There's one problem with this action. The browser doesn't know what we want to copy. It'll attempt to copy what we have selected. However, the user doesn't have anything to select, nor should they have to. The button should conveniently add the CSS property to their clipboard without doing anything else on their end. The solution we'll implement will require a series of steps. Here's what we'll do. We're going to create a text box on the spot. We'll pre-fill the text box with a string version of the CSS property. Then, we'll force the browser to select the contents of the box. After selecting the box, we'll run the copy action. Let's write the code to see how this would work. At the top of the function, we'll create a variable called element. Its value will be the object returned by the document.createElement function. The createElement function will create an element, as its name suggests. The name of the element should be passed in as the first argument to the function. We'll create a text area element. The next thing we'll do is update the element with the value we want the user to copy. We'll set the element.value property to the following transform this.box.transform. We can update the value property on the element to change its value. We want the value to be the transform property. The transform property is what we're manipulating on the box element. The value for this CSS property will be the box.transform property. It's the string we're creating over on the computed property. Next, we'll insert the element into the document. The createElement function doesn't insert it for us. It creates the element in memory. We can insert the element anywhere. We'll call the document.appendChild function. This function will insert an element into the document. We have to pass in the element we created. The element is on the page. We can force the user to select the contents of the text box by calling the element.select function. This function will work, but there are a few problems with it. To better understand, let's try it in action in the browser. The page is displaying perfectly fine. If I were to press the copy button, we'd see a text box appear on the page. The value for this box will be the transform property. If we make changes to the box with the sliders, we should be able to see the changes reflected in the text box after pressing the copy button again. We can test if we're copying the data by opening the console in the developer tools. I'll paste in whatever's in my clipboard. The value I pasted in will have the correct value we wanted to add to the user's clipboard. The solution we have works, but there are a few noticeable issues. The first issue is the text box appearing in the document. It's necessary for the text box to be on the page for us to select the contents, but it visually disturbs the application. We want to hide it from the user. The second issue is that the text box sticks around when we don't need it anymore. 
we can tackle these issues by hiding the box before adding it. After we've copied the text inside it, we can safely remove it. Let's handle this in the copy function. We'll tackle the first issue first. Before we update the value, we'll update a couple of properties. First, we'll call the element.setAttribute function. Form inputs can be set to read only by adding the read only attribute. We'll add the read only attribute with no value. We don't want the user or the browser to accidentally update the input before we have the opportunity to select it. It's important we make this read only to prevent that from happening. Next, we'll hide the element. We'll set the style.position property to absolute. Then, we'll set the style.left property to minus 9999 pixels. The properties we're changing will move the element off screen. The user won't be able to select it manually. The only way they'll be able to is through JavaScript. These three lines will effectively hide the element from the user on the browser. Let's handle the last issue. We want to remove the element after we've copied the data. At the end of the function, we'll call the document.body.removeChild function. This function will remove a child element placed inside it. We can specify the element to remove by passing it in. We'll pass in the element variable we saved earlier. We're finished. Let's try testing the button one more time. On the browser, refresh the page. Afterward, try changing the values and copying them to your clipboard by pressing the button. We can test if we have a copy by pasting the contents of the clipboard to the console. As you can see, we're able to copy the data to the user's clipboard successfully. We've successfully created our first app in Vue. We were able to utilize a lot of what we learned in the previous section. We have a tool we can use to test how an element will behave if we change its transform properties. That wraps it up for this lecture. We'll continue in the next one.